Welcome back. Common Sense Radio, discussions of a state nature. We're going to talk budgets, the Alaska legislature, the impact on you, the citizen, and the overall economy. Bringing, uh, bringing this discussion to us every week is Brad Keithley, who's a former oil and gas consultant, retired counsel for, uh, for the industry. He is also the founder of Alaskans for a Sustainable Budget, which is an organization dedicated to just that, creating actual, sustainable, usable, workable budgets. Uh, he joins us this morning to talk about a couple different things. Uh, good morning, Brad. How are you? Michael, I'm doing great this morning. How about you? You know, I can't. It's just every day above ground, my friend, is a great day. And today <laughs> is no different. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about uh, one of my favorite topics, which, of course, is the hypocrisy in the legislature. You had a great uh, article that you wrote uh, up on your Facebook page for Alaskans for a Sustainable Budget talking about and pointing out the absolute hypocrisy of what the legislature is doing in both chambers in regards to taking from the one side of the economy and giving back to the largesse of government. Yeah, the the, the focus of, of that piece was really on the hypocrisy of those who uh, are opposing the income tax but are just fine with, with taking the PFD, uh, cutting the PFD. And the hypocrisy in that is is very simple. They argue that they're opposing an income tax because of the adverse effect it would have on the economy, the adverse it would effect it would have on jobs, and the adverse effect it would have on Alaska families. Well, interesting. We, we have analyses of those. Uh, the Institute of Social and Economic Research uh, uh, last year did analyses of those very issues, and they found that cutting the PFD has a larger adverse effect on overall Alaska income than an income tax, yep. that cutting the PFD has a larger adverse effect on jobs than an income tax. And and in a separate analysis published earlier this year, ICER found that cutting the PFD had a larger adverse impact on Alaska families than an income tax does. That's not to say that an income tax is, is good and okay. It's still taking money out of the private sector when we're in the middle of a recession, but but all three analysis, all of those on all of those issues, cutting the PFD is worse than an income tax. So when some in the Senate say, or some in the House say, well, we're opposed to an income, well, it's mostly the Senate, we're opposed to an income tax. By gosh, we're going to protect the Alaska economy and Alaska families. Then they turn around and they and they're okay with cutting the PFD, uh, frankly, by more than half. Um, uh, it, it, it's just, I mean, the, the disconnect in there is just, is just staggering, uh, and the hypocrisy of, of, of them articulating, you know, the position that they're against an income tax for these reasons, but not even focusing on those reasons when they come to a PFD cut is just, uh, is just apparent. Well, and, and doesn't this stem in part from the belief and, and I think the, the misplaced belief, and we've seen this echoed by the Senate president and more that the dividend is nothing more than welfare. I mean, that's literally how they treat it. You know, I've, I've come to realize that both Pete Kelly and John Coghill in particular view this more as a moral issue than they, than they view it as an economic issue. And the morality is just that. They view the PFD as being somehow uh, uh, state funds, state government funds being distributed uh, to uh, individuals uh, that now that the state needs those funds back, the state's perfectly entitled to do that, uh, take those funds back in order to uh, avoid a, a, an income tax. And they view it on some sort of moral plane that that taking that money away from Alaska individuals is okay and is justified uh, in order to avoid uh, having having an income tax. I, I, I just I don't I don't view it on on the morality of it. I view it on the pure economics. Alaska is in a recession. We are suffering a, a declining economy, and in a declining economy, you want to do what's best economically for the economy and cutting the PFD is the worst thing you can do. It decreases income. It has, it has a worse effect on jobs and income tax, and it has a worse effect on Alaska families. So we ought to be thinking economically. The fact that Pete and, and John are thinking uh, in, in moral terms is disturbing. But even if you get, even if you get beyond that, 
even if you go beyond that and say, okay, let's think about it in moral terms, the PFD is not welfare. It's, uh, it, they, they start from the mistaken premise that it's the government's funds that are being given out to Alaska individuals. The way the permanent fund was set up, the permanent fund dividend was set up, the way that earnings stream was set up back in the early 80s when Hammond, Governor Hammond and others did it, was half of the money was to go to Alaska citizens, half of it was to be available for government when government was when oil was no longer sufficient to fund government. That half to go to Alaska citizens it was in the statute, was in was in what they proposed, what in what was adopted at the time. And frankly, I think we need to think about that as government just being the collection agency for the half that is being distributed, the half that goes to Alaska citizens. Not that government has a right to it, not that they can latch on to it, not that it's government's fund in the first place that they can choose to keep. But I think I think the right way to think about that is the government's just the collection agency for that half and it needs to be distributed and it needs to be distributed to Alaska citizens. So if we're going to get into the morality of this, the morality of it to me is that government is taking the half that is the government's exercising its power as the collection agency to take part of that half and, and keep it for itself. It's, it's like you know a bank collecting money for somebody or some financial institution collecting money for somebody or, or a stockbroker collecting money for somebody that's, that's, that's their money and, is, and the, and the stockbroker or the bank is just the collection agency. It's like them deciding, well, I'm just going to keep this money because you know, I, I could use a little bit more money myself. Right. And eh, it's just – and, and then, you know, could, it's just it, whoever it is. We could use it for a higher good. We could use it for a higher purpose than you. And, and I've been, I, I mean, what's what, what what's sort of interesting to me is I've been through this before. I've, you know, you, you mentioned I was an oil and gas lawyer. I was an oil and gas lawyer for 35 years. I dealt with a lot of issues. One issue I dealt with in particular was the Osage Nation in Oklahoma, where the federal government collected um, – uh, monies from producers that the federal government set up a system to collect uh, oil revenues from producers that were that were for uh, the, the citizens of the Osage Nation, and and every once in a while we went through this thing where the federal government said, well, you know, we could use this money instead of giving it out to the to the citizens of the Osage Nation, we could use this money for health care for the for the Osage Nation, or we could use it to build buildings. For the Osage Nation, <laughs> and each time the and each time the pushback was, hey, wait, wait, this is our money, right? We get to decide how we want to spend it, federal government. You don't get to interject yourself just because you're collecting it. You don't get to interject yourself in it and say, oh, we're going to keep we're going to keep all that money. We're going to use it for your good. We get to decide. We, the Osage Nation, get to decide uh, what uh, how that money is going to be spent. That's the same thing we've got in Alaska. And for the Senate to, to tr on moral grounds, to somehow inject themselves in it and say, well, we, we know the greater good, uh, and we're just going to keep this money that's going through our fingers, and we're going to spend it for your good uh, on, on various things that we know are for your good. I mean, we ought to have the same pushback in Alaska. We are having the same pushback in Alaska right. that they had with the Osage Nation, which is we know how to do this better than you do, guys. Keep your fingers off our money. Right. And, and, and again, this this kind of this moral. I think that Mark, uh, Mark Fish from the Alaska Libertarian Party, he lined it out. I mean, a couple of weeks, a couple, three, four weeks ago. And I thought it was brilliant because I used to kind of rail about the fact that we have this quasi socialist constitution that collectivizes the whole. And he said, look, it's the ultimate expression of our private property rights, because th those have been usurped by the federal government, the compact with the state and everything. And so in lieu of us receiving our subsurface mineral rights, this is our share of that. That same wealth, it is the ultimate expression of our share of that same wealth. So, I mean, if 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 Kelly and and Coghill and all those are thinking this is some kind of you know you know uh, uh, you know subsidized welfare, it's not. It is again our portion of our rights that have been usurped essentially by the compact, the statehood compact, and 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 it's the Hammond and the, some of the framers' intent to try and share some of that wealth back with the people who actually own it. Yeah, Hammond. Hammond. There's a great passage or a great piece in in Diapering the Devil, and it short, sort of shows up in Bushrat Governor too. A couple of the books that he that he wrote. People said people accuse me of the PFD being socialist that we're that we're taking wealth and and you know we're we're taking wealth and distributing it to individuals. He said it's the it it, it is sort of like Fit Marx Marx said it's the ultimate capitalism. We're putting money into the into the private sector. 
We're, we're, we're enabling people to spend money on their own. We're not taking money from them. That's actually what the Senate's doing now. It's actually what Kelly and Coghill are doing now. They're taking, indiv- they're taking individuals' money from them to be spent by a central government. The, the PFD, is, as Hammond explained, it was the ultimate capitalist thing. We're putting money in the hands of the private sector. We're allowing individuals to make choices about, about where they spend that money. So not only is the Senate – not only is the Senate um, uh, hypocritical because they're, they're saying we're doing this, uh, you know, because it's, it's better for the overall economy, it's better for uh, jobs, it's better for families. Not only are they hypocritical uh, when, when, when they say that about, uh, about, the, about the income tax, that they're trying to save us from all that, when they don't apply that same standard to the PFD, they're being anti-capitalist. Right. Because they're taking money, they're taking money out of the hands of individual citizens, uh, and, um, and and moving it into the into the central government and allowing central government to to make the decisions about where they spend it. So it's just I, th- this whole thing when they try to defend the income tax on one ground, and then they just overlook what they're doing to the PFD or say, well, the PFD's different somehow. That's just it. Just doesn't that dog don't hunt? I mean, the the, the arguments they're using for it apply even more to the PFD uh but they're but they're they're not recognizing that. Well, and the reaction, uh, we had uh, Senator Pete Machicki on the program here recently and asked him specifically, you know, we had these things up in front of you, and, and some senators have suggested there should be a public input vote. There should be an advisory vote on this, that the people should have a say in what's going on. And I asked him why he voted against it, and he goes, oh, because this issue is so complex, people just wouldn't <laughs> understand. And then he essentially said at the end, and by the way, they just would vote with their pocketbooks anyway. Well, of course they would. That's that's what <laughs> it's the self-interest. I mean, it, it was just really it was a tone deaf re- reply, quite honestly. And I think that they understand. I mean, they have memories to remember back to 1999 in the vote. The last time they tried to do a POMV change to the PFD and it was crushed 82.7 percent against after a multimillion dollar campaign it was waged to convince people that it was the greatest thing ever. I mean, I think that they understand it, although maybe only intellectually and not really at their core. This is the hypocrisy we're talking about. Yeah, it's I mean, it's the equivalent. It's the absolute equivalent of, of things that they like to make fun of. Uh, all the Republican senators like to make fun of, which is, you know, the federal government. We're from the government. We're here to help you. And, and they all go, oh, the federal government, oh, that's bad. You know, the federal government should just, just get out of our way and let us do what we want to do. But now, but now, when we get, now when we get to Alaska, suddenly it's good. We're from the government, and we're here to help you. We know, we know how to spend your money uh, better than you do, uh, and, we, and we know that, that we, you know, we're doing it for the greater good, and we're, we're really here to help you. We know that we ought to you know, spend a little bit on this, spend a little bit on that, spend a little bit on something else. Um, and, and that's better for you uh, than you spending it yourself. And it's just, I, I, I'm, you know, basically what's going on, I cut through all these, all these arguments, basically what's going on is the Senate's gotten to the point where it can't cut anymore without, without disturbing its support base, right? right? Can't cut the oil industry anymore, can't cut education anymore, can't cut the university system anymore, can't, can't do this and can't do that. So they need to go grab money. They don't want to grab money from their support base, which is, which is largely, you know, people who would be affected, adversely affected by an income tax. So they want to go more adversely affected, higher income individuals right. uh, by an income tax. So they just want to go grab money from somebody else. And, and they're just, and they're grabbing money from, from the middle income and the lower income Alaskans. Um, uh, and they're trying to come up with these arguments, these smoke screens uh, to justify it. But they're just they're just wrong. I mean, the arguments are just wrong. They apply more to the PFD cuts than they ever do to income taxes. And, and it's just sometimes it's humorous to, to watch them do it. But but the, it's very dark humor because they're going ahead and doing it. And then the House is like the best of both worst worlds is because they're doing both the PFD grab and the income tax on top of it. So they're trying to grab all you know the money from the from the higher end incomes and take money from the it's like everybody's getting robbed. Yeah, it's uh, and the house has has a bigger spending. I mean, the reason the house is doing both, in large part, is because they have a bigger a bigger uh, package of spending that they that they want to support. And e- and even they sort of ran out of 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 hutzpah, if you will, 
uh, uh, at some point on cutting the PFD and decided, well, we need to go get it from someplace else. Um, so, yeah, the House, the House has got its own problems. But the Senate, I mean, the Senate, everybody said, was going to be the bulwark, right? It was going to be the one that pr- protected Alaskans from from the raids on the private economy. The Senate itself, itself even, even tries to say that they're the ones there to pr- protect the private sector. But they aren't. They're, they're pulling the worst possible levers uh, in terms of the overall Alaska economy, in terms of overall jobs, and in terms of, of Alaska families um, uh, in, 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 this, in this effort to try to deal with the, uh, with the fiscal situation. And it's just, uh, it, it just doesn't work. I mean, they may say it a lot, uh, but it just doesn't work. And frankly, if we went to an election uh, or if we go to a repeal vote, uh, their arguments are going to just get laughed out. They'll ultimately be laughed out of the box once you once you finally you know have have them see the light of day uh, in the public, as, as opposed to being down in the Juno uh, bubble that they are now. Once you get them out statewide and people try to make these arguments in public, uh, it's going to wear thin fairly quickly. I do want to revisit real quick the ITEP report, but we're up against the break. And so I want to touch on that just again briefly. You hit it at the first part of the segment, but I want to reiterate it and then get into what uh, passed in the Senate last night. Brad Keithley is our guest. Uh, Again, Alaskans for a Sustainable Budget. we got more coming up. Don't go anywhere. The Michael Duke Show continues. AM 700 KBYR and Oldies 102.1. This is The Michael Duke Show at KVYR.com. We appreciate you joining us. Don't forget, you can always drop us an email, me at MichaelDukeShow.com. That's M-E at MichaelDukeShow.com. Now, back to more of Dukes on Demand with a podcast on AM 700 KBYR. The Michael Duke Show is on AM 700 KBYR and Oldies 102.1. Uh, it's killing me. All right. Welcome back. The Michael Duke Show, AM 700, KBYR, and Oldies 102.1. Great talk in the morning. Good times and great oldies for the rest of the day. Thanks for coming in and joining us. Brad Keithley is an expert on oil, gas, uh, more. He's former counsel uh, for uh, oil industry uh, companies and has got some insight into that area. But we've been facing primarily on his role as the founder of Alaskans for a Sustainable Budget, taking a look at what's going on in the economy and everything else. Brad, one of the things that we have been hitting on really hard in this uh, program here, well, for the last, I guess, uh, two or three months, is the fact that uh, all these measures that the both the chambers have been talking about, both the House and the Senate, uh, have direct impacts on the public or the uh, private economy. And one of the things that they have just failed to do, really, is any kind of deeper analysis on what the effect would be on the private economy. They did see the ICER report. That's been out for a while. They had That had some of those things. But there's this new report out from ITEP, the Institute for Taxa- uh, Taxation and Economic Policy, that specifically says, look, this is bad juju. Yeah, it's uh, th- this report. Uh, I'll have it up on on Alaskans for Sustainable Budgets later today. I'm writing a piece uh, around it, and and either you may want to put it up on on KBYR as well. Um, but this report is excellent in terms of breaking down the impact of the various fiscal options on Alaska families. I, the ISA report did that. Uh, the ISA report from last year did that at a fairly high level. Uh, the ISA report from earlier this year that focused on families with children uh, got more granular, got, got into more detail. But this report uh, is even more uh, detailed uh, than those two and does an excellent job identifying what the impact of the various options are by income category. And, and what this report does that the ISA reports really didn't do, the ISA report sort of focused at the at the two extremes, the, the, the highest wage income or the highest income families in Alaska and the lowest income families in Alaska. This report sort of dives into the middle uh, and talks about not only uh, those two extremes, but also middle income families and upper middle income families. Um, and, they, and they define those, the middle income family is defined as uh, where the family income is between 40000 and $73,000 a year. Uh, and the upper income or the upper middle 
um, you know, 73,000 to 115,000. Officer didn't didn't go into that great an extent about the impact on those. And interestingly enough, I mean, who who was it? Somebody was talking about. One of the senators was talking about. Yes, we understand that uh, that that the PFD cut has an impact on the poor, uh, but but we'll take care of them. We'll have programs for the poor. Uh, interestingly, or, or importantly, this this study shows that the PFD cut has a bigger impact than an income tax or a sales in, uh, tax, a bigger adverse impact on families, even in the middle income, uh, middle income families, 40 to $73,000, and even upper middle income families uh, earning with incomes of between 73 and $115,000. In those two situations, uh, the PFD cut still has a larger adverse impact on overall family income uh, than than an income tax would, so it's um, it's uh, it's isolating. What this report really helps do uh, is isolate down uh, the, the the who the Senate's really looking out for. And right. The Senate's really looking out for the upper ten percent of Alaskans who would be affected more adversely affected by an income tax than by a P- PFD cut. The upper the other you know ninety percent of Alaska families. More adversely affected by um, uh, by a PFD cut. So th- this report's great. I, it, it, it's worth everybody who, who who thinks about this issue, wants to understand this issue, should delve into this report. And as I, as I said, I'm going to post it later today with a little a piece around it uh, uh, on Alaskans for sustainable budgets. This should have been some of the stuff though that was that the legislature should have been. These are some of the questions that they should have been asking, which again shows me that. They had already made it. They already knew what they wanted to do. They they had made the decision. It seems like ahead of time. Well, yeah, they they. <laughs> I mean, the Senate said they hadn't decided on PFD cuts, but well, they voted for it last year. But they said they had an open mind going into the session. But they quickly went uh, to PFD cuts, and there and there there wasn't any analysis like this done by. Uh, 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 asked of ICER or any more detail of the past ICER reports. They just sort of shot right to the bottom line and said, this is what we're going to do, and these are the reasons we're going to do it. And what we're seeing, I mean, we were talking about this in the last segment, what we're seeing is every argument they put out there gradually being eroded. Uh, as you as you think about the argument, as you look at the argument, the economic argument they make for, for income tax over PFD cuts is wrong and, and is being eroded. The moral argument they make for for income tax or PFD cuts over income tax is wrong and gradually being eroded. And now the argument that they're looking after Alaska, working Alaska families is wrong. Right. Uh, and, and this, in this report helps erode that. So it's just, I mean, they're, they're getting to all this is, all this is, is, is focusing on narrowing and narrowing and narrowing the, the base that the Senate's really concerned about and really looking out for. And it isn't all Alaskans. It's just, it's just sort of their, their donor base. Uh, that they're looking out for. Uh, Todd is on the line, Brad. I want to talk about what the Senate did last night, uh, but Todd's on the line, so let's take this call quickly, and then we can talk about the Senate stuff. Todd, you have a question for Brad. What's on your mind? Well, you know, I think maybe it's more of a comment. Uh, or during the commercial break, I switched over, and uh, Senate President Pete Kelly was on a different station, basically uh, using the narrative uh, that we've been talking about here, which is that, you know, we're not we're going to save Alaska from an income tax. And Brad's point about about the PFD cut in the last two years um, has had a huge impact on the poor. And and this this is what I, I mean. It's ridiculous to think that you you can take uh, ten grand out of a family's budget, family of four's budget, over the last two years. And somehow that's not going to have an impact on the lower and the middle class. You know, the problem is, is that the PFD is a hidden tax. Right. And I guess my, my comment is that we need to have conversations with our neighbors. I, I, it's great that we get on talk radio and we all, uh, you know, like each other's posts, so to speak. But we need to be having conversations with our neighbors and explain what the PFD is, what its intent and the original intentions were, and how it is a hidden tax. Right. I, I would agree, Brad. 
Oh, absolutely, I agree. Oh, and Todd, thank you for coming back to this program <laughs> after <laughs> you were after you after you went to the other one. Yes. But but I, I I'm, glad, I'm glad the commercials are not on the same uh, same time time schedule there. Yeah. Well, I, <laughs> try, there's a method to our madness. <laughs> Have a good one. <laughs> Thanks so much, Todd. There might be a method to our madness there on that. Brad, I mean, this is, again, he's just out there, again, espousing the same thing. We're here to protect you while never saying and never acknowledging that what they're dealing with is literally a tax. They just ignore that fact. Well, they're going to they're gonna end up on an island. I mean, the, the more this goes on, the more reports, like, the more that the ITEP report comes out here, the more discussions uh, we have, the more that people like Todd – uh, listen to those discussions. The more stuff that we get up on Facebook, which is sort of the you know the 21st century newspaper these days, the more stuff we get out there, uh, uh, the more people understand uh, that of, of what the adverse impact is on Alaska families. The very people that that the Senate claims are defending on Alaska families is this report, the ITEP report. People need to read this, uh, and people and Todd's right. People need to give it to their neighbors to read because it is clearly showing that not only at low income, not only at middle income, but at upper middle income levels. This is, right. this is the thing that's just the, 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 that some people should find stunning. At upper middle income levels, income levels between 73000 and 115000 the PFD cut is still worse yeah. uh, uh, th- than an income tax. Right. So it's – we just need to keep getting the, the, the discussion out there. Uh, Brad, uh, last night the Senate did do some work. Uh, you and I have talked about the need to cut back on the oil and gas tax credits, that they're unnecessary, that there's anything unlike it anywhere in the world, uh, that it's really not necessary. It's money out. I mean, we're bleeding right now, and it's like we're trying to slap a Band-Aid on a gushing artery. We needed to stop that. Uh, the Senate has acknowledged that the, that need to happen. They did do some work to it last night, although they refused to embrace the full plan of the House, which, of course, was to reveal key provisions of SB 21. I think the Senate's, I think the Senate's done a good job. It's taken them years uh, of, of recognition that this tax, that the cash refund program was, uh, was not doing Alaska, was not uh, producing a return to Alaskans taking them years to sort of get around to it. But I think this re- revision they did last night uh, of the oil tax bill is a good one. They've stopped. Uh, if it, I, I haven't gotten through the details yet. I've been working on it this morning, but I haven't gotten through all the details. But if you believe the summary that, that they published and you look at the newspaper articles around it, they've stopped uh, the, cash, uh, the cash credit program going forward, uh, terminated it, uh, terminated even the automatic payment uh, provisions, the automatic, as low as they are, the automatic payment provisions uh, that were in the law through the oil tax credit fund, uh, and made any contribution toward those past oil tax credits that have accumulated subject to appropriation, which means there's no, there's no, uh, uh, there's no floor any longer on 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 contributions that that need to be made. The floor this year is something like 72 million dollars. The House proposed $36 million. The Senate included $72 million. But this step of eliminating uh, the floor, eliminating the fund, uh, eliminates that $72 million. So it's really whatever amount the, the legislature and the governor agree should be should go toward these past amounts. They, they made more liberal uh, what those credits can be used for. Uh, all of them basically have to go toward um, uh, all of those credits now have to go toward um, uh, production, have to be, you know, realized in in in, uh, in, in connection with uh, with actual production, as opposed to just being cash payments out the door to subsidize um, uh, certain producers. And so, I think that's a very good step. They also hardened up the floor uh, a little bit. The, when we when people have talked about hardening up the floor, there are ways in which um, uh, current producers. Uh, uh, could could during low price uh, cycles could end up uh, not only paying no tax but potentially have tax owed back to them, sort of like an income tax refund that we realize as individuals. They hardened up that floor somewhat. I'm trying to piece through exactly how much they did. There were proposals out there to harden it up at the to the four percent minimum tax. Uh, the House proposal, uh, the House bill contained. A, hardening that up to the 4% minimum tax. I'm not sure the Senate's done that. It looks like the Senate may have only hardened it up to uh, the fact that there would be no no refunds due uh, 
right. uh, during low price periods. They may not have hardened it to four. That would be a mistake. They ought to harden it to four. But uh, it looks like the Senate has has made some progress. They did eliminate all of the all of the sort of the extraneous stuff, in my view, the House had done to change the existing uh, tax structure, change what we did in SB 21, which right. I think would have an adverse effect. Right. And, of course, none of this uh, satisfies any of the House's provisions in their mm-hmm. bills. It says that they must uh, basically take it as whole. And uh, so this means there's going to be a duking it out. Uh, we got the conference committee coming up. And there's going to be more of this. And so the only answer, 30 seconds here, Brad, the only answer is to get out there and let people know what's going on. The answer is get the ICAP report out there, start talking about the fact that, that the Senate's just factually wrong when they make the claims they do, uh, and that we need to go back and and undo these PFD cuts that we've got and then start from there and figure out the plan going forward. Brad Keithley, Alaskans for a Sustainable Budget. I'll post the ITER report, ITEP report here on our Facebook page. You can check it out there. You can also check out all Brad's commentary on his Facebook page. Brad Keithley, thanks so much for coming on and joining us. Michael, thank you for having me as always. As always, good stuff. We got more coming up. We're going to talk a little bit more about this on the other side, plus Colleen Sullivan Leonard and her trips in the house. That's up next, AM 700, KBYR, and Oldies 102.1.